for watching RCB News with me, Jane Motoni. Energy experts from different continents are gathered for five days here in Kigali in the Power Africa Conference. Officials in the Ministry of Trade and Industry have noted that increasing of the price of milk sent to the processing plants will help farmers to increase their investment in the industry. Welcome to the news in details. Now, the Chief Justice of Sierra Leone, Desmond Babatunde Edwards, has noted that the judicial system plays an important role in the development of a country, and that is why he is in Rwanda on a study tour. Olive Nete has this report. It's been 20 years since the Sierra Leone civil war ended, a war which negatively affected the economy and social welfare of citizens. The President of the Supreme Court of this country, Desmond Babatunde Edwards, who is in Rwanda on an official visit, points out that Rwanda's speed in development is far beyond Sierra Leone's speed in development. He also notes that the judiciary system should play a vital role in making sure that taxes are paid on time. We believe that if you set up a revenue court as well, as long as people know that if they fail to pay what is not theirs, Right? The Bible says, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar. Tax is the government, so they have to pay it. We are there to help the government to see that they pay these taxes. And that's, that's the role we play, apart from the traditional role. So um, judiciaries in, 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 in modern um, societies now, developing societies, do play that role. In this, your country, you have fiscal courts, and they are playing that role. So we want to learn from that. The Chief Justice of Sierra Leone, Desmond Babatunde Edwards, also emphasizes on the reason behind his visit in Rwanda. We all Africans, as I said, we came from the same past. War, a situation where huge uh, percentage of the population were being, de were being dehumanized, and it's, the, it's in the past. We are moving forward, and as we move forward, we need we need to learn from those that have moved forward after such situations. Rwanda is one. Apart from that, your record, what you have, it shows that you are developing, right? Your mortality rate has reduced. Corruption has reduced. Everything has, is improving. Why can't we learn? Do we need to go somewhere else? Certainly not. We need to come here. Dr. Foster Nezidiayo. The president of the Supreme Court of Rwanda notes that the judiciary system of Rwanda has a lot to learn from Sierra Leone as well. Many of our first laws were based on the laws we took from the colonists. After that, we established laws that are suitable in regards with the development of the country. Then we also took some of the laws from the English-speaking countries, laws called common law. So the common law is what they are doing in Sierra Leone. They are familiar with that system. That's why we say we can learn from them as well to improve our laws or see how things work. We want to look at both sides. We want a system that is suitable for us, which goes forward with the country's goal. We don't have to be slaves of the laws we had in the past or only focus on the common law system. Instead, we want to establish the system that is suitable for us with the best practices. We want to learn from that and improve. The Chief Justice of Sierra Leone is on an official visit for a week with a delegation of 11 people, a visit that started last week. In addition to learning about the functioning of the Rwandan judiciary system in solving tax and business-related issues in general, this delegation will also be informed about the status of the Rwandan judiciary system, its performance, and interaction with other institutions and the public through technology. Olive Nete, RTV News. Energy experts from different continents are gathered for five days here in Kigali in the Power Africa Conference, where they are discussing the problem of large number of Africa households that do not have access to electricity and the cost and pollution caused by most of energy sources in the continent. Betty Mutoni has this report. More than 500 million households in Africa without electricity. Climate change has caused the hydropower plants on the rivers 
to become unreliable. The sharp rise in the cost of petroleum products globally. These are some of the issues to be discussed at the Power Africa Conference. Barry Rowan, the associate teaching professor of Carnegie Mellon University, Africa, noted that as the researchers are doing all the way possible to make sure that this continent can get enough electricity. The IEEE Power Africa Conference actually has been running for a long time and people have recognized that there's a huge potential for growth and to deploy good uses of energy to help people's livelihoods. So the concept of Power Africa was to say, wow, there's a lot of infrastructure to build. Let's talk about how to build it together. And what I find most exciting about this conference is that we have people talking about improving economic development in rural places, but also economic development between different countries. They do it all with energy. We deal with all those technologies here. So we call it Power Africa because we think we can turn all the lights, turn on all the productive uses of energy here in Africa. Ampersand is one of the company that was exhibited in this conference that deals with e-mobility. It is also one of the hundred start-up listed among the Economic World Forum's technology pioneers of 2022. And the CEO of this company, Joshua, noted that this technology is answering some of the challenges, including sharp rise of petroleum products and air pollution. Well, I think it's, it's really remarkable. Rwanda has passed uh, Africa's first comprehensive e-mobility policy, and Rwanda's been doing a, a really good job of marketing itself to entrepreneurs um, like, like myself and like our business uh, around the world as a place where you can come in easily without corruption, you can register a company quickly, uh, and to uh, test out new technologies and new business models that can then be scaled uh, across the rest of Africa, as we've already started to do in Kenya. Also, this addresses a big problem of, of air pollution. The traditional motorcycles have very basic engines, there's no catalytic converters or fuel injection, uh, and so there's quite a high amount of pollution that comes out from these uh, petrol motorcycles. In addition to benefits, this technology has to the country. There are many people it has given jobs and increased knowledge and understanding. Because of technology, I got a job and it helped me to develop. When you're working, you develop. So if you get monthly salary, that makes life easy because you get money. Since I started working with them, when they came, I didn't know the e-models, but since they came, I now know when it has a problem and I can solve it myself. Minister of Infrastructure Dr. Ernest Sabimana says that Rwanda has done a lot in terms of electricity distribution, where 72% of households have electricity. What kind of energy should be used in case the world keeps on facing this problem? In our country, we have projects. There are some from hydropower plants. But with the climate change, sometimes water steam. But we have methane gas in Lake Kivu that is being exploited to provide electricity. Remember, we have another power plant called Shema. It will soon generate electricity. Gazmat recently launched is under study to see how it can generate cooking energy and immobility. All that is being discussed in this conference to see which reliable and sustainable energy solutions to address the challenges facing the world. In Africa, there are over 500 million households without access to electricity, with the Sustainable Development Goal 7 of ensuring access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all by 2030. Betty Mutoni, News. Officials in the Ministry of Trade and Industry have noted that increasing of the price of milk sent to the processing plants will help farmers to increase their investment in the industry, raising production levels though some retailers have been found to hike up milk prices without justification, even as wholesale prices remain the same. Adam Squizera has this report. One of the factories that receive milk from livestock farmers is the Nyadi Industries. During this dry season, the amount of milk produced has decreased, which caused a serious impact 
on those who buy processed milk from it. According to Bahati Jean Claude, who is in charge of the quality of products processed by this industry, explains. This means that our productivity also reduces. Since milk is one of our major products, to produce all milk processed products, we deliver to market. In the fiscal year of 2021-2022, the processing industry received 77.5 million liters of milk. For domestic demand, the management of Inyanji Industries and some industries that receive milk from livestock farmers says that they usually receive 120,000 liters of milk per day, but now they receive less than a half of it. The drought problem is pointed as the main cause of production reduction, although, on the other side, there are some who choose to sell milk to other people because they receive high amount than what they get from milk collections, which that they are mainly intended to earn money to be used in livestock activities that cost a lot. The cow needs its salt, needs medication when it is sick. Those are the major medication we must always have. Like we lacked Kabesia a long time ago. When they say milk aside, they get much than the amount they will get at that milk collection zone. The announcement released by the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Minicom, clearly states that the amount paid to the farmer who takes the milk to the milk collection will be 300 francs per liter from 228 francs, which means an increase of 72 francs, while the milk collection delivering to the industries will be paid 322 francs per litre. The Ministry of Trade and Industry, Dr. Ngavitsinze Jean Chrysostom, explained that in any case this increase in price will have farmers. The price we set today will be based on investment of the farmer, and we think it's enough. And I'm sure that we did our best so that the farmer will get the amount we'll be happy with. As there will be availability of milk at the market, as we will keep doing that to encourage the worth of farmers in terms of money. Even though the increase of the milk price per liter will not solve the issues permanently, but farmers see that there is at least some ways it will support them. But also, they should provide a way forward for the problem of lack of grass and water during dry season, hence to milk production reduction. As they say, enough never exist. We estimated for the farmer to get one liter of milk spends 412 francs. But as it is on 300, there is an improvement. Since the farmer used to invest much, as he don't gain, he invests in other farms. The farmer used much efforts especially in stocking the grass. And grass stocking is too expensive, as it requires the space to stock it, cultivation, harvesting, and other more things to support the grass. By this time, they will put more efforts as the price increased. Inyanje Industries is one of the largest milk processors in the country, where apart from domestic market, it also has foreign markets, as Deputy Director of this industry, Anita Dansiri Umuhire, notes that the increase in price of milk brought to the industry will help in the increase of their productivity, as also satisfying the market demand of their products. For the farmer to address some of the challenges they have, especially in the dry season, challenge of uh, water supply, of feeds, etc. And so the farmer will then be able to address some of those challenges and thereby increase his production, which will mean that as a Nyange will be able to secure more milk uh, intake, uh, which is good for our consumers because then we'll be able to put more product on the market. The prices given to the livestock farmer per liter of milk to the collection were last updated two months ago in order to go with the season and to help the farmers to cope with the cost of livestock farming. It is as statistics also shows that on average, a Rwandan resident drinks 72 liters per year, while international standards says it will be 120 liters per year. Adam Squizera, RTV News. Motorists in Kigali City say they are happy that they no longer have to queue up on the side of the road while the police checks if there are vehicles that have pending fines because technology has now sped up the process. Take a look. 
It is used to see vehicles queued up at police checkpoints as their owners waited to be cleared of any pending fines and areas. But now the police has introduced technology that allows those source vehicles with no fines to pass without having to line up, something that motorists are happy about. Before, you used to find 10 to 20 cars lining up as the police checks if there are those with unpaid fines and those without fines who fall victim of the lineup. As this process is time consuming, but now this technology the police only stops those with unpaid fines. This has helped us in terms of saving time and reducing traffic. Even now, as I was coming town at Onatrakom and Kam Kigali, cars are being lined up, but there are those with unpaid fines, and the passenger I was taking reached at their destination on time. Tax motorcyclists are not happy about the fact they still have to stop to be checked and ask to be included in this new technology. If there is a way, this technology tracks the number plates of motorcycles with unpaid fines, as well, just like it does to cars, they will save us a lot of time, because this lines up does not only affect our passengers, as they don't get to their destination on time, but also hinders our work. The Rwanda police spokesperson, CP John Bosco Cavera, says that this technology does not secrete motorcycles and urges people to take care of their fines without having to wait and risk being punished. There was a time the police would stop cars to inspect those with unpaid fines, but this technology has been speeding up this process. The portal for paying fines is not only accessible to drivers, but also motorcyclists. Like I've been saying, you just have to type star 127 hash on your cell phone. They should strive to settle their fines rather than having to wait until they are stopped on the road. The National Police says that this technology that tracks motorists with fines is not only in Kigali City and is in other parts of the country as well. Adams Quizera, RTV News. Thank you, Adams. Now, the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda has announced that the fifth national population census has reached a 72% completion and should end in a week's time. Precious Kirezi has this report. An enumerator is well received as he visits a home to take the census. He's been carrying out this task for the past eight days, and although his experience hasn't been without its hindrances, it's gone generally well. I was received, and the briefing of the census, conducted prior definitely, made the process easier to carry out. However, sometimes we find the homeowners unavailable, and we then have to make appointments based on their schedule, which often means working after dark, but the local authorities are collaborative. Local authorities and representatives of census clerks have pointed out that the teamwork between them has played a key role in ensuring the smooth running of the census. The settlement committees have appointed person to accompany and, and assist the clerks as they conduct the service. The Deputy Director General of the National Institute of Statistics maintains the view that the census is going generally well and has alerted us to its 72% completion rate. Additionally, he's also shed light onto the collaborative efforts the Institute has indulged in to ensure the census is all-inclusive and isn't leaving out gaps of designated groups, for example, street kids. Target, we have hit our targets, as expected, in the past eight days, and just yesterday, we were able to confirm a 72% progress rate. We are so working closely with local authorities to make sure everyone has been included, and their personal details are on record for the reference of the relevant authorities. <laughs> The current population census is the fifth of its kind in the country. The previous ones were conducted in 1978, 1991, 2002, 2012, as well as the current one whose completion has been scheduled to take place on the 30th of this August. Precious Tidesi, RTV News. Oh, there you have it. On behalf of the entire news production team, thank you so much for your company. I'm Jane Mutoni. Bye for now.